Friends, my name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. I thought the song ended there. Uh, welcome to Sim Sunday. We are going to dial in your dives this afternoon. And um, I actually have a gig that I need to leave at 5 o'clock for. So we're going to cut this stream a little bit short. Uh, probably stop it at 4.30 Eastern. And um, yeah, I'm going to go work. Uh, I forgot to ask who the artist is again. <laughs> this, is, this is two gigs in a row. Um, I, I, I talk to them a lot about what the shots are, what they're looking for, uh, the limitations of FPV, uh, what FPV does well. And um, yeah, like I'm so focused on that, <laughs> on that stuff that uh, I've, I've stopped caring about <laughs> who the actual artist is. Um, but I'll, uh, figure it out when I get there. It's, it's, it's usually folks that I haven't heard of, um, because, you know, musically, I, I don't listen to a lot of, um, stuff that gets recorded in Atlanta. Let's just say that. Um, nothing wrong with it, but it's, you know, just not what I, what I typically listen to or pay much attention to. I, to be honest, though, even if it was stuff that I listened to, I probably wouldn't know. I, I, I don't. Um, I do not follow music like I used to. I, I used to really be, um, so I grew up as a musician playing drums uh, for many, 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 many years and uh, took private jazz lessons from a phenomenal drummer named Tony DiNicola up in New Jersey um, who is, yeah, was very well renowned in the jazz scene back in the 60s and 70s. Um, and that was my life for... I don't know, from the age of like nine to my 20s. Um, and uh, I stopped playing drums when I graduated college uh, because I started living in apartments. And uh, But I, I uh, got into going to shows and listening to a lot of music uh, more. And But yeah, into my 30s, it kind of slowed down a little bit. I still listen to music, but don't we all? But um, I just don't follow it as much as I used to. Uh, this is also a Q&A live stream, so drop any questions you've got into the chat, as always, and we will talk about them. If you just drop a question into the chat without typing FPV, 
The beautiful people in the chat will answer. I will not read your comment, though. I only read the comments where people type CIDFPV into them, which then lights up in orange. You can type at CIDFPV. Uh, but yeah, if you just put the name of this channel and you spell it correctly and you don't put a space in between CID and FPV, it will light up an orange and I will read your chat comment. Um, this is my full-time job. If you want to leave a comment that gets read and support the insanity that is trying to do FPV full-time, um, you can do a super chat or I would actually like it even better if you came over to CIDFPV.com and clicked every single button because if you don't do that, I will die. Uh, a slow, painful star death of starvation. So you better go over there or it's your fault. <laughs> it's not your fault. Um, <laughs> a lot of different ways you can support me over here. Uh, none of which have 30% taken like Super Chats. <laughs> um, it's fine that they take such a big chunk because they give me this platform to live stream on. But if you don't want 30% of your money taken over here on CIDFPV.com, there's a million different ways that, uh, that you can make that happen. The best one is to jump onto my Patreon, to be completely honest. You're going to get a ton of benefits. Um, you're going to become a member of the Gangly Gang, which let's be honest, that's the biggest benefit, goddammit. Um, but you're also going to get access to the Patreon page with a ton of tech articles that I've written. Um, seven plus years of FPV experience boiled down into a, a bunch of kind of, you know, as easily chewable as I can chunks. Uh, you're going to get access to a YouTube playlist with uh, 80 or 90 some odd unreleased edits, half done edits, sketchy flying that I don't want to be public and Patreon-only live streams that I've done. Uh, you're going to get two different Facebook groups, one for selling stuff to a trusted group of people, uh, another for just kind of hanging out. And then you're going to get full access to the Discord channel, which is where a lot of these beautiful people in the chat hang out. Um, you can get on the Discord by just scrolling down here at my website and hitting the Discord link here, but you're not going to get full Discord access, and there's some really cool stuff in the, the Patreon-only section. And you can join my Patreon for as little as three bucks a month. That is seven and a half cents per hour of content that I do every single month. Um, and yeah, it's well worth it, I promise. Uh, you can also buy some stuff if you need some retail therapy over on my Etsy store or on my Teespring store. Or you can hire me to work one-on-one -on -one with you if you just want to really take your FPV experience and accelerate it. Um, because that's really what you're going to be doing, right? Like, you can find all of this info by watching hundreds of hours of my live streams or Joshua's or just trolling the internet, but your time is money, right? And if your time is worth a good amount of money, I can help you out with that. You're going to pay me to dump a shitload of knowledge on you all at once um, in a one-on-one -on -one session for a half an hour or an hour. Um, the, the three sessions that I really like to do that I'm the best at... Uh, are flight instruction, tuning, and build planning. Um, those are the things that I've really focused the most on in, you know, sort of like the meta of, of all things is where you put your time. Um, and those are three of the things where I've that I've really focused on for the last seven plus years. Um, so those are the things that I can really help you out with the most. I'm not the best when it comes to like, hey, I'm a brand new pilot and I need to learn how to bind ELRS. Uh, some would say that I'm probably the worst when it comes to binding ELRS. So, yeah, I, I can technically help you get up in the air initially, but I'm much, 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 much better at uh, taking someone who's already up in the air, uh, who's maybe starting to get good and pushing you to the point where you're going to get great as quickly as possible. Um, so, yeah, use that, yo. Your time is worth money. I promise you that. Uh, and, it's, and it's probably worth more money than you think it is. Um, Here's a PayPal if you want to do a super chat and directly support me, but you don't want that 30% to come out from YouTube and Google. And then look at all these affiliate links, yo. If you're ever buying something on the internet, someone has an affiliate link to that website. If you look up their affiliate link and click it before you check out, they will love you forever. And they will continue making content for you to watch for free here on YouTube or whatever other website. Uh, we, I have affiliate links to Weebleed FPV, Newbie Drone FPV Cycle, Amazon Get FPV, Oh My God, where the Grinderino is, uh, HD Zero, Flywoo, Emacs, Banggood, Camera Butter, and AliExpress. If you're doing orders on any one of these websites and you hit my affiliate link at any point before you check out, I will get 1% to 6% of your total uh, uh, cart 
And yeah, there's no reason not to do it. You don't, it doesn't affect you in any way. Um, what some brilliant people have done is change their bookmarks to my affiliate links, right? Right click the affiliate link and then just copy the link address and use that as your bookmark so that when you go to get FPV with your bookmark, you're automatically hitting my affiliate link and away you go. Um, if you don't use bookmarks like me and you just type, like when I wanna go to Amazon, I just type AMA. Um, my when I type AMA, the link that it suggests is my affiliate link to the to the uh, nut grabber, as I call this thing. Um, if you type AMA and it just suggests like regular old Amazon.com, off on the right side there's a little X that you can remove the suggestion. So if you remove your regular Amazon.com suggestion and any other ones that there are, and then you hit my affiliate link a couple times, your browser will think that you always want to go to my affiliate link. And you can do that with all of the different websites, and that's just another way to you know not have to remember to go to my website every time. Let me take those off. Let me take uh, the hit stop on this charger. So that it doesn't beep and drive absolutely everyone insane because I know at least one person just looked over at their battery charger and went, wait, what? Um, this is the second batch of batteries that I've got on this charger here. And this is, this marks uh, everything being charged and ready to go for this gig this afternoon in downtown Atlanta. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I, 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 I always try to wait until the absolute last second to charge my LiPos if I'm driving from home. Um, but what I do the night before is I get all my gear ready and there we go. Um, the night before I get all my gear ready and I charge like goggle batteries, transmitter batteries, stuff like that. Um, but the day of, if the gig is in the afternoon, I will wait until the absolute last second to charge my LiPos. It just, you know, the, the, the LiPos don't love being fully charged. They love being at storage voltage. So leave them at storage voltage as long as you possibly can. And then at the last second, charge them up. This also minimizes your risk of a fully charged battery venting and shooting fireballs in your home. Um, so yeah, it's a really good practice to have if you can swing it. Sometimes, you know, you, you don't have time right before, so you have to charge them. Uh, the 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 day the prior day and that's that's fine uh, but yeah this is a, a better way of doing it if it's possible in the chat hockey rounds was first Frank Nicholas was next Apache smoke wooden sniper Danzel the terrible McMucus uh, left step flush FPV wind jumpy northern tier Brandon Woodford hempy FPV uh, Robert Rosser Captain Vlad Rock crawler Skippy Free Lojo Terry Burnett Bitter Root Douglas Otwell E Felton Adam West and Look at all these people. Danzil the Terrible, uh, Skippy FPV slash Experimental X <laughs> RC. Which are you? Are you transitioning from one to the other, Skippy, or is it is it staying Skippy slash Experimental? I like it. Stavel, uh, Hot Point Hoodlum, Hempy again. Morton Upshot, Brandon's Baked Beans, Rock Crawler, Volusia, uh, Morton Upshot, Free Lojo, Rock Crawler, Greg Romack. Espander, Mamacita, we're getting into some repeats, so I'm gonna, this is when I miss someone. Sorry if I miss you. Denzel the Terrible, Left Step, uh, Death, Dezeen, uh, repeats, repeats, repeats. E. Felton, C, I'm just gonna call you Cy, Troy, and Bo. I think I got everybody. E. Felton as well. Uh, what's up, friends? Thanks for coming. Very cool of you. Um, click the thumbs up button, leave a comment, do all the youtube -y things, and uh, I'll keep doing this forever. Uh, the folks that have tagged me so far, Apache Smoke Wounded Sniper, uh, him and Quadbod are who you have to thank for all of the timestamps on these videos. Quadbod is going backwards in time, um, and then uh, Apache Smoke Wounded Sniper is covering all of the live streams moving forward. Um, give the both of those guys a huge uh, pat on the back, high five, whatever, um, because, yeah, they're putting time, they're taking their time to actually pay attention when watching these and make uh, time codes as we bounce between subjects and it just makes these things so much easier to watch after the fact so like every single one of my live streams from like two days ago to Christ I think Quadbot has gone back like six or seven or eight months at this point they've all got timestamps so um, you can literally go to my channel and click the little magnifying glass and search for like ELRS and it'll pull up not just the live streams that have ELRS in the title, but the live streams that these two guys have typed uh, time codes into. Um, 
it's just incredible. I'm so appreciative of them. Um, Quadbot has also created a CID FPV sound pack um, that you can use to customize your transmitter sounds. And uh, we are going to be releasing that, I think, on Patreon sooner than later, um, maybe this week. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, I played it a couple weeks ago. <laughs> it's just, it's absolutely hysterical. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know if it's if it's just extra funny for me because like it's because it's me. I don't know. It's, I just think it's 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 the funniest thing ever. Um, that anybody has ever done. <laughs> I mean, I'm obviously biased, but like, uh, is is it the funniest thing ever, or is it just me? Uh, I don't have access to the, the. That's weird. Why don't I have access to the uh, to the Google Drive? Uh, uh, Quadbot. I, I just clicked the uh, request access button because um, it, it. I got access tonight. That's that's weird. It was fine the other day. Maybe, maybe he. Um, Maybe he had it open to everybody the other day, and then um, he put it to blah, 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 blah. I don't know computer things. DJ Noakes, thank you for subscribing. Welcome to hell. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> Welcome to uh, the Seattle FPV show. Uh, stay a while and listen. What video game is that from? Tell me. Tell me what video game is that from. Uh, Christopher King with a $25 PayPal. Thank you so much, dude. Um, he says, in lieu of flowers for Duke. Um, thank you so much, Chris. Very, very cool of you. Um, uh, yeah, we had to put our family dog, uh, to sleep on Wednesday of this last week. And, uh, it's hit this family, like, really, really, really hard. Um, Duke was a very special dog. Like, he was... You know, I know everybody thinks that their dog is special, but if you've had a bunch of dogs or a bunch of cats, there's always one that's like magical and like a little tiny human being, and that's what Duke was. Um, so yeah, it's been really, really tough. Um, he was Maggie's best friend. Their relationship was something really special, and it lit up my day every day to see their interactions. Um, so I'm hurting because of the impact that it's had on the family. Like I, I only got to live with Duke for about a year. Um, and Duke, Duke and I had a, I loved him. Don't get me wrong, but, uh, Duke was the man of the house for a long time. And then when I came in, he was like, well, what the hell man? Um, so he, he was always kind of a little shit with me. It, it, it was loving, but yeah. Um, Maggie and the kids relationship with Duke though is, is yeah six, seven, eight, nine years in, and um, it, it's just on a whole other level. So what's been the most heartbreaking for me has been seeing the effect that it's had on them. Um, that's what's really hurt the most. Um, so, yeah, it's it's been, it's been tough, but we're getting through it. Um, every day it's a little bit better. And, um, yeah, you know, it's... When, when you lose a pet, it's your reminder to not take them for granted, right? If you have others, um, or if you decide to get another, another one, you know, it's, it's very, <clears throat> it's very easy to take them for granted and to not like just look them in their little eyes every single day and say, I love you and, and, uh, and whatnot. It's easy to kind of focus on like, why did you shit on the carpet? You little bastard, you. Um, so yeah, so it, it's, uh, that's how I try to think of, of loss, right? Uh, it's, that's my sort of healthy spin on it. It's it's always impossible and it always hurts like hell. But um, yeah, I'm gonna get something out of it, something good out of it. D uh, thank you so much, Chris. Super generous. Uh, I did see uh, Norval Rogers. Thank you for uh, bouncing around on the tiers over on Patreon. Very cool of you. Uh, Insta 360 email. What are you guys up to? Nothing. All right, great. Uh, here's the call sheet for today. All right. There was a, uh, there was a, a Patreon email, and uh, I like to give you guys shout-outs. James Simmons, there it is. James Simmons, welcome to the Gangly Gangs. Thank you for joining the Patreon. Uh, very, very cool of you. Uh, and then I believe that there was one more. Oh. Uh, Man, my email is just a war zone, man. There it is, Cy. Uh, Cy, thanks for, for jumping onto the uh, Patreon, and welcome to the Gangly Gang. Your support is uh, 
Much, much, much appreciated, my man. All right, people. I think I'm caught up here. Let's get caught up on chat. And then we are going to jump over the moon. Uh, Michael Jones as well. I, 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 I think I gave you a shout out previously, but just to make sure. Michael Jones, thanks for joining the Patreon. Uh, Michael Jones is, uh, he jumped onto a tier where he's going to get entered into a bunch of giveaways. Uh, one of the cool things about joining my Patreon at the $5 and up tiers, the, the $3 a month tier is like general admission, it gets you access to all the stuff, uh, but if you want to support me a little bit more and you want to potentially win yourself a bunch of stuff that'll pay for many months of your Patreon, um, you can jump on to the $5 and up tiers. I do giveaways the first Monday night live stream of every single month. Typical giveaways are going to have anywhere from $50 to $100 worth of stuff. So if you win one of these giveaways, it'll cover your Patreon for many months after that fact. Um, so, yeah, if you are if you want to dabble in gambling addiction, I got your back, yo! I got your back! I'll help you begin down a path that might ruin your life. As if FPV hasn't already done that. That's bullshit. FPV helps lives, yo. Danzil the Terrible tagged me in the chat and said, is a nose, uh, Ciani FPV is a nose picker, and that would make us all boogers. Uh, that's an inside joke from over on Discord. Uh, Apache Smoke Wood and Cyber says, good evening, Ciani FPV, what's up? Hope you and the family are doing better after losing Duke. Uh, what's up, Gangly Gang? How's everybody doing? Uh, Brandon Woodford says, uh, hey, hey, Gangles, and Ciani FPV. Rock Crawler says, hey, Ciani and Gangly Gang. Uh, Stavel says, what's up? Uh, Morton Upshot says, on a 2S lithium ion build, what can I set in Betaflight or Blue Jay to get the most power out of the 1404 40, uh, 4500 kV motors? Looking for a setting solution, not hardware. Um, there really isn't anything. I mean, as, as long as you have your motor limiting set at the default of 100%, which you should, um, yeah, there's really nothing that you can do in Betaflight, in the software, to get any more power. Um, this is one of the reasons why I always recommend that you buy a motor that is a higher KV than you would normally want. Not like double the KV that you would want, but let's say up to 30 or 40 percent higher KV than you need. In most cases, I just buy the highest KV motor available. And then um, if I don't want all that power in Betaflight in the PIDs tab, there's a motor limiting option that defaults to 100% that you can drop down to like 80 or 70 or 75 or whatever. Um, because of this, because there's no way to artificially increase power, um, if you buy the motor that has more power than you need, you can then back it off. Um, and... I sh I, using the word power just now was not correct. You want to buy a motor that has more KV than you need. You want to buy the exact right size motor because the smaller the motor, the less the weight on the ends of the arms and it drastically inc uh, improves the flight uh, characteristics uh, when you do that. So you want to pick the smallest sized motor possible uh, that's going to cool, that, that's going to be a big enough heat sink to stay cool. Um, but then you want to get a KV that's a little bit higher than what you need um, so that you can actually use that motor limiting. Uh, I love setups where I run the motor limiting at like 80 to 85% because then I've got like 20 to 15% more RPM that I can get out of it if I want to run a lower pitch propeller or a propeller with less blades or if I just want more power, right? Like, it's really nice if you go fly a location that's bigger uh, than what you normally fly or if you're chasing a subject that's faster uh, than, than you normally chase to be able to digitally increase the power versus, like you know, swapping motors or swapping to more pitchy propellers or, um, yeah, any number of, those are the two main things that you can do to, to get more power out of a rig. Um, but yeah, so that's my suggestion there. There's really nothing that you can do in beta, uh, in, in beta flight more than, um, if you're already at a hundred percent motor limiting. Hot point hoodlum says, how big is your banana? Greg Womack says, what would cause different props to explode during flight? Motor hot, uh, other three warm. 
The main thing that'll cause props to explode during flight is using uh, Loctite on your uh, on your screws. Uh, Loctite eats plastic, and so it'll eat into the hub, and then it'll weaken the hub, and then the propeller explodes. Um, so that's kind of the main thing. Make sure that you don't get Loctite anywhere near your anything plastic, really. Um, uh, if the you said the motor is hot and the other three are warm, I guess if the motor is getting hot enough, it could transfer that heat up into the hub of the propeller, which could weaken it up. Uh, I, I've run motors really hot and I've never really had that happen. So that's, that's, that's an interesting one. Um, hopefully you've been using Loctite on your, near your propellers. Hopefully that's the problem. Um, the other thing is just mismanufactured props, uh, which used to happen quite a bit. It has not happened much over the last few years that Gemfan and, and HQ have really gotten so good. Uh, so yeah, I doubt that it's that. Free Lojo drop in the Patreon link. Thank you, dude. Mamacita says, yo, yo, mofos. See how your PV hair looks good. Thank you, dude. My phone is going ham right now. Uh, Denzel the Terrible says, do you give one-on-one -on -one hairstyling tip sessions on Fiverr? I do not. Um, I, I am just blessed with, uh, good hair genes, I guess, uh, because I just get my hair cut, not every, like, two months or so, and then I wake up, and I do this, and then it's, this is what happens. I turned these lights down a little bit, and now I'm looking a little too dark, so let me, oh boy, that was a big smack of light. There's one. I'm gonna turn this other one up a little bit. Okay, there we go. This one actually went a little bit too much. There we go. That's looking a little better. I'm always trying to uh, I'm always trying to balance these lights to not have them spill on the background as much. Like, let me show you. So I I, I have a separate. Well, this is what I really want the background to look like. Like that. That's what I prefer the background to look like. I've got a uh, a red light over here that that highlights the the top left there um and then i've got another light here that lights up this and then there's a blue light uh purple light down here that sheds some light on here and then i still have this jankily just dropped up here uh row of led strip lights that i need to put in a proper housing um but yeah this is what i prefer the background to look like uh but as soon as i kick on these um the the main soft boxes here there's a bunch of spill that hits that back you can really see it there this right one really spills quite a bit you know it actually kicked that one down a little bit um i do have grids on these two soft boxes which really do help um but it's uh yeah it's a it's a never-ending challenge trying to get light onto myself but not onto the uh onto the background and uh, it's a common problem. The best way to deal with it is to move farther away from the background. If, if I could move this desk forward a little bit more, I would. Uh, but unfortunately, there's a drum set on the other side of this desk, which is gigantic, so it's, it's kind of hard to do that. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to move this desk any, any farther forward. Um, and so, yeah, you know, first world streamer problems. This current setup is kind of like as good as I can get it in terms of like balancing the room layout with how I want the uh, the lighting to be. But right now I'm actually just kind of rotating these soft boxes off in this direction a little bit, um, which should help. I, I did that one a little bit too much here, so let's just pull that one right back. There we go. Um, so that should be a little bit better. But that's actually gonna that's spilling a little bit let and and now it's gonna you're gonna see it really fade as I push off here that's what the grids are doing if if you ever wondered what like a grid does and here's what a grid looks like um, grid is that it's like an egg crate looking bastard here let me turn this one off well then yeah there you go now you can really see it um, so yeah you know like from the side the grid covers it up but then from the front the light passes through um, Grids are one of the best ways to, uh, what they're doing is they're controlling the spill uh, of light and they're making the, the lights more directional. Um, 
And that's that's exactly what I need, right? I want the, the light to come down and hit me, but I don't want it to shoot back there. Um, yeah, multiple different ways you can kind of fix that. But the, the grid is why when I come over here, it loses a bunch of light. And then when I come over here, I get brighter because I'm going into the, moving into the light. Uh, Stavel says, what's up, Ciadi? Uh, well, hold on, YouTube did the thing. YouTube did the thing. Let's, uh, let's get this going here. There we go. Uh, Mamacita says, does affiliate links, does affiliate links with the apps? I can't figure out where the, the iPhone spell check did you dirty on that one, Mamacita. Tag me again and, and ask that with different words and, and I'll be able to help. I, I can't figure out what the, what the question is. Uh, e Felton says, I'm doing a five inch build soon, but can't decide on motors. What's available that would be a good choice uh, with what's out there now? Uh, you know, I am a little bit confused by five inch motors right now. Um, pro Chris Rosser has done a ton of really good uh, testing of five inch motors though. So I would probably just check out a couple of his more recent tests uh, and make your decision there. Unfortunately, my favorite five inch motor, the T-Motor F40 Pro 4 has been discontinued. Um, and I've actually been talking to, to T-Motor about it and they're sending me something. I don't know what it is. Um, hopefully it's lightweight because yeah, lightweight 2306s are absolutely magic. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what else to recommend really right now. I, I'm also, I, I don't fly much five inch freestyle anymore. Um, so yeah, I've, I've got a ton of T-Motor F40 Pro 4s that I stocked up on when I found out that they were gonna be going away. Uh, and so like, I'm good, uh, but that doesn't help those of you out that don't have a stockpile of the damn things. Um, so yeah, it's kind of tough, but hopefully whatever T motor sending me will be good and then they'll make it and all be right with the world. The T motor F 40 pro five is not a motor that I can really recommend. It's way too big. It's way too heavy. Um, although I guess if, if you've got like a big fat 750, 850, 800 gram all up weight rig, that might be a good motor. I think it's a 2306 and a half. It might be like a uh, I don't know. It's a big, heavy motor, um, and there are a lot of big, heavy motors out there. The the F40 Pro 4 was very unique because it was very lightweight, very tough, um, and, like, just the right size. So, yeah. Uh, Sai says, what's up, Seattle? Good to be back. Any reason why my Mobula 6 with 30,000 KV motors won't do a race launch? The moment I pitch forward, it gets so jittery, ends up freaking out. Um yeah, sometimes they do that. That's a sign that your um, your PID gains are kind of like on the edge. If you back your PIDs off, um, it'll help it. But then in, in once it's up in the air, it won't fly as good. So it's a little bit of a balance there um, of where do you want it to be good? Do you want it to be good when you're doing launch mode? Or do you want it to be good for the entire rest of the time that you're flying? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it helps if you do launch mode on a soft surface. If you're doing launch mode on like a hard surface, it's gonna, yeah, the high frequency vibes are gonna bounce and feed and feed back into each other off the hard surface. On a soft surface, it's gonna be a little bit more forgiving there. So there you go. Sai uh, says, Sai uh, works great for me, awesome. Denzel the Terrible says, uh, your face light is a little low. It's funny that you guys noticed it. Hot Point Hoodlum says, Abe's Odd World Odyssey. Uh, n no, I, uh, it, it was a, what was it a quote from? It was a quote from Diablo, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, the quote was, uh, stay a while and listen. Death Dezine says, let's watch some whoop dive videos. You know, I still need to, uh, I still need to post that. I have a 1400 foot, uh, 65 millimeter, 300 MAH tiny whoop dive that I did, and it's all edited and ready to go. I just need to make a thumbnail but life has been chaos lately. So it's coming, it's coming, I promise. I've played it on the live stream a couple times, so you can you can go back uh, and check it out. Bradley Powell with a $20 super chat. Thank you so much, Bradley. He says, two weeks ago, you helped me make uh, my first Tiny Whoop better by suggesting BT 2.0, different frame and Weebly batteries. I bought all of that and didn't use the affiliate link. So here's your take for that. Thanks again. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bradley. Uh, very, very cool of you. 
Um, don't feel bad about forgetting to use my affiliate links because I forget to use my own affiliate links. I'm, I'm allowed to use my own affiliate links and I, I do forget a lot. This is how I figured out that I could do the um, remove suggestions in the URL bar because uh, one day I was like, okay, I need to figure out a way to use my own damn affiliate links. <laughs> uh, how can I do that? And uh, yeah, <laughs> so don't feel bad about forgetting. Thank you so much for, for the super chat. That's incredibly generous. Uh, Left Step says, I've got throttle cut set up on my radio. Is that comparable to motor limiting or something entirely different? Uh, great question, Left Step. So um, the there are two ways that, that you can reduce the amount of, that you can digitally reduce the amount of power that your quad is going to make. One of them is a throttle cut, which you can do in the, uh, in the rates tab or on your transmitter. Uh, the other way is motor limiting in the PID tab. The difference is throttle cut is literally just as if you don't raise the throttle all the way up. Like you're gonna be able to raise the throttle all the way up, but digitally it's not gonna send a signal that says 100%, it's gonna send a signal that says 80% or 90 or whatever you set it. Um, so that is just literally not raising the throttle all the way up as far as the quad knows. Um, uh, motor limiting in the PID tab is very different in that it basically tricks everything into thinking that you've put a lower KV motor on there. So it not only does what the throttle cut does, but it also limits the PIDs. And when if, if you only wanted to do a throttle cut of like 95% or 90%, it's totally fine to use um, throttle cut. If you want to limit down to like 80% or 75% or 70%, it's probably better to do it with motor limiting because the motor limiting is going to pull the PIDs down as well as chop the, throt chop the top of your throttle off. And if you're having to, to limit down to 75 or 70 or 65%, you're gonna to wanna to pull the PIDs down. That, that is, a, that is a, um, a powertrain that's actually got too much power in most cases. And when the powertrain has, has too much, the PID loop becomes very nervous and you end up having to pull your PID sliders, not for you guys, it's this way. You end up having to pull your PID sliders down. And that's not necessarily a good thing because the PID sliders and just the, the, the PID loop itself, which stop thinking of it as a PID loop, think of it as an error correction loop because that's really what it is, it's correcting error. Um, the PID loop is, and, and those numbers are based on time, not raw horsepower or torque or thrust. Um, and you wanna have a mix of the, the, the PID gains um, being a little bit more aggressive if possible to shorten up the timing and you also want to have a drivetrain that has enough power I, i've talked to spats uh uav tech um about this quite a bit and there's not like a a, a because the 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 question is right what's better have a more powerful um have more power more raw power or uh, shorten up the timing to correct the error. And it's an imperfect kind of balance. Um, but the, the long and short of it is, if you build a system that has tons of power, um, and then you run your sliders right down the middle at 1.0, or you even pull them down to 0.9 or 0.8, um, it, you end up with a system that's like more nervous. And, and the same thing is true if you do it the other way. If, if you have a, a powertrain that has not enough power, but then you push your sliders really high, um, again, the, the, the aircraft becomes very nervous. You, you tend to want to be in between for the most forgiving setup where it's got good flight performance, but you can crash it and you can beat it up and it's not in this like weird anxiety, nervous state all the time uh, where it's, it's about to fly off into Never Never Land. Um, so yeah, what we usually see, and, and the other thing is, the more powerful you go on the motors, uh, the heavier they become. So 
we want to have the lightest motors possible because the motors are on the ends of the arms and they travel the biggest distance when you do any stick input. Um, and so, yeah, th that's kind of where you want to be. You want to have this sweet spot. Usually what you want to shoot for is um, pushing the pids up to like 1.2, 1.3, 1 1.4-ish on the sliders. Um, and yeah, that's usually going to give you an aircraft with light motors, but enough pit authority and enough error correction um, that happens quick enough for the response time to, to give you like locked in uh, flight dynamics. So yeah, it, it's, it's, there's not a, uh, a perfect answer for it, but that tends to be, yeah, being somewhere in the middle there tends to be the best kind of, uh, uh, give you the best results. Um, and yeah, so I tend to just use, I have had really good luck using uh, motor limiting in the PIDs tab uh, for everything. And, and I'll motor limit down to like 80%, even 75% uh, and still get really good flight performance. Um, and then, yeah, if I'm flying at like a big spot, I can crank it up to 100% or 95% or 90%. I mean, ideally... You never put it at 100%. Ideally, you only ever get it to 99%. That's the perfect world, right? Because then you have a little bit extra and, and you've always got a little bit extra. Um, usually you'll just max it. But uh, I've never had a scenario. And, and in fairness, I don't run setups that have the PIDs like really, really, really aggressive because those are kind of a liability. Like if you, if you bang into something, you bend a prop, um, there's a good chance it's going to go full throttle, and that's kind of sketchy. Um, so I always run rigs with the PID loops backed off, with the PID gains backed off a little bit, um, so that in case something happens, it doesn't get nasty, or if I crash it somewhere that's like unrecoverable, I can hopefully take it back off and fly it home if for some reason I can't get in. You don't want to rely on uh, like, oh, if I crash it on the rooftop, I can just go into the to the OSD and just bring my PID gains down. Like, you don't want to rely on that, you, you, in my opinion. You, you want to have something that's backed off a little bit uh, to give you that extra little bit of leeway. Um, but, you know, that's just my opinion. Thanks again for the super generous super chat, Bradley Powell. Uh, Drone Hater FPV with a $10 super chat. He says, can we dive a little deeper uh, on the three and a half inch question from Joshua Bardwell's live stream, motor size, KV, batteries, props, etc. Thanks. Um, we certainly can drone here. This, this is a great spot to, to dive a little bit deeper into, into, top, into topics. Um, so let me start off with this. I don't like three and a half inch. Um, three and a half inch propellers on sub 250 all the way up to like 300 grams um, for me personally is still a little bit too floaty. Um, I like to try to build, I like for five inch freestyle builds to be like the control that you try to match everything else up with because frankly they fly better than anything else it's just true um five inch rigs have had the benefit of like orders of magnitude more r d from our entire community over the last eight nine ten years um and so go figure they fly the best uh so they're always going to be the benchmark and then i try to build stuff that flies as close to that as possible and what that means for lighter weight rigs is that you don't want to have the same ratio of power to all up weight to propeller size. Um, the size of the propellers on the quad uh, is a parachute. When, when you come off the throttle and you're zero throttle and this thing is sailing through the air, the bigger it is, the more aerodynamic drag it has. So the bigger it is, the less it's going to carry its momentum in the way, in the magical way that five inch rigs do. Um, and so what we try to do is really very closely balance the all up weight and the amount of power that the rig has to the size of the rig. And I'm holding up a tiny whoop, but this also applies to non-ducted rigs. The propellers are always spinning, so the propellers are always punching a little hole in the air, and that's the parachute. When, when you come off the throttle, they spin down, but the uh, air mode is still on, the PID loop is still running, so they're they're speeding up and slowing down, and they're disturbing the air. So there, there's that, this, you know, this rig in this dimension, it's not actually 
in the air this small. It's probably about this big because it's disturbing the air above and below all four of these propellers. So the actual size of this rig is, is probably about this big aerodynamically going through the air. It has to push a column of air that's roughly this big, is my guess, um, as it goes through the air. Uh, what I've found with three and a half inch propellers is to get that flight experience as close as possible to five inch, they need to be like 350 grams, 300 to 350 grams. Um, so what I find better for like 250 to 300 grams is actually a three inch propeller. The trade off is a three inch prop is going to be less efficient and it's going to make less power. Luckily, we have plenty of motors that can cover you on that and, and you can make the power back. Um, you're never going to make the efficiency back, but who cares? Tiny little micro batteries are really inexpensive. So just buy more of them. They're, you know, you can find them for like 10, 11 bucks each. So just buy more. Um, you're still going to get three to three and a half minutes of runtime. And that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, first and foremost, I, I am not a fan of three and a half inch. Um, I love that a lot of the frames being made right now are three and a half inch because you can just put three inch props on them. Um, yes, you're you're carrying a little bit of extra weight and, and technically I would rather um, fly a, a, a three inch specific frame. But what's kind of cool about it is it's not that much bigger. You're not carrying around that much extra carbon fiber on the ends of the arms. And if you've got a situation where you want more efficiency, you want to do like a long range mission, you can put three and a half inch props on and do that. And the motors that you're going to pair with three inch propellers, if you typically like a 1404, like a 1504, if you put that motor onto a three and a half inch propeller, that is what the long range guys do. The long range guys run propellers that are bigger than they should be for the motors. So it's kind of a perfect situation where you're almost, you're like falling into a, a more long range kind of setup. Um, but the question on Joshua Bardwell's stream is, what is the right motor for a three and a half inch propeller? Uh, we always assume for freestyle. Um, and the and 1404 is not the right motor for that. Um, that is, 1404s, are just barely big enough for a three inch propeller. Um, so if you go up to three and a half, especially with the, the more pitchy three and a halfs that we've been getting lately, um, yeah, 1404 is gonna be a little small. Uh, so 1504 is a little better, but not quite better enough. <laughs> uh, you really wanna bottom out at 1604 and then go up from there. I really like the way th the more pitchy three inch. So if you're gonna do a low pitch three and a half inch prop like the Gem Fan 3520 or maybe even the 3525, um, you can get away with a 1504. Um, I would prefer a 1604 at that point. T-Motor makes a good one. Uh, if you're gonna go with a more pitchy three and a half inch prop, you're gonna wanna bump up to 1804 or um, oh my God, uh, ages ago, uh, called me up and said like, hey, what's the ultimate micro motor? Just like price, no option, sizing, no option. Uh, what What is it for three inch, three and a half inch? Uh, and I told him uh, uh, 1605 and he's been super busy with cinematic gigs, but it now exists and it's sold out. Uh, it's the Aerolite 1605 3600 KV. He also asked me about the KV. Um, yeah, 3600 KV on 4S with a three and a half inch prop is awesome. Or you can do a really pitchy uh, three inch propeller and this 1605 3600 will work. It is gonna be a little bit bigger of a motor. It's gonna be, you're gonna be a little bit under propped in that setup, but uh, it's always better to have more motor than less. Uh, so yeah, this is also a really great choice. I was a little bit freaked out about this from a durability perspective because the Aerolite 2004 motors uh, are notoriously kind of fragile, but uh, Bot Grinder has been pounding on the, the so the, the motors are, uh, I should not say who they're made by, uh, they're made by a good company and 
a lot of they were given a lot of feedback so the thinking was like hopefully they'll fix it for the 1605 and it would appear that they have because bot has been bashing a set of these 1605s and they've been holding up really well um so i think that these aerolite 1605s are the other like top tier choice personally my grinderino is going to get built with x nova 1804s which are the most bomb proof motor that i have ever flown on any any quad um they are hysterically durable they make great power they're super smooth you're not gonna have jello issues uh they are just a brilliant motor unfortunately you can only really get them last time i checked from pyrodrone um but yeah if you go on here and you search for 1804 you're gonna find them you can get them in either t mount here or you can get them in m5 mount i actually prefer them in m5 mount uh, if you're going to run 6S, you're going to get 2400 or 3100 kV. Uh, don't run 6S on a micro, though. It has no benefits, and it's much harder on the ESCs. Uh, run 4S on micros, and when you do that, you're going to get these 3500 kVs. And, yeah, these are just absolutely brilliant, man. I, I cannot say enough good things uh, about these X Nova 1804s. They, they just melt my brain with, with how good they are. The, the best thing about them is that they have a 3mm motor shaft, and on a like sub 300 gram rig a three millimeter motor shaft is damn near indestructible i've not been able to kill one of these things yet from breaking a motor shaft or bending a motor shaft so um you end up with a rig that's super 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 strong that was like the first thing that i said to tommy in this conversation a couple of years ago about the the 1605 was that it has to have a three millimeter motor shaft um and it does which is probably why it's holding up so good so um yeah uh, motor, so we talked about motor size. We talk, uh, uh, from a KV perspective, you want um, uh, you want 3,500 KV ish. If you can find something with 4,000 KV, that's fine. You can motor limit it down. I would not on 4S want to go below 3,100 KV. Let's say just because I was just looking at that from the X Nova. Um, it, yeah, 3,500 kV is a, is a really nice sweet spot for 3.5 inch. It's a little bit low for 3 inch propellers, but there are some pitchy 3 inch propellers that'll bring that back to life. Um, for 3 inch, I really prefer 4,000, even 4,500 kV. Um, so, yeah, more kV is, is. I wish the X Novas, instead of 3,500 kV, were like 3,800 kV or even 4,000. Um, but. On a pitchy three and a half inch prop, you can make it work, and, and it, it still flies really, really, really good. Uh, batteries we talked about run 4S, not 6S. Uh, my preferred battery is 4S 850. They are cheap, they do not sag, and you get a really good amount of runtime. And then propellers are a very personal thing, and they are very inexpensive. So in terms of propellers, just buy them all. Like when it comes to three and a half inch, you can buy every single three and a half inch propeller that exists for like thirty dollars. So do it, and then fly them all, and then you pick which ones make the right amount of power, make the right amount of noise, um, are durable enough. Uh, th those are the three big things with propellers is uh, to 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 choose. And it's completely different with every single person. Every single one of us crashes at a different velocity during different camera movements and into different materials. Uh, so it's it's really hard for me to, to say like, this is the perfect propeller for you because I don't know any of that about you. Um, but luckily propellers are super cheap and they make the biggest difference in the way that the rig flies. So you can usually change propellers and actually like tell a difference. Um, the rest of these quads, if you change a frame, if you change a motor even, uh, if you change a flight controller for sure, ESC for sure, uh, the difference is so minuscule that the, when you think you're feeling something different, you're probably not. It's probably just placebo um, because you just spent a bunch of money and time on it, right? So you're damn, it better fly better and your brain's going to trick you into that. But then what's interesting is you, if you go back to the original setup, a lot of times you can be like, oh, shit. This is no better. Um, so, yeah, keep that in mind. That That's kind of an important thing to uh, to realize is that the placebo is very, very, very strong in FPV. Uh, yeah, great question, brother. 
Volusia says, Mobula 7, I have intermittent squeak at the motors. I think when I grab to test, can't reproduce. Almost sounds like a loose prop, but it's all solid, very vague. Uh, but have, have you encountered? I have not, but my guess is going to be it has something to do with the fact that these little tiny motors don't use bear most of them don't use bearings they just use little uh brass bushings and so what i bet you is happening you got your motor shaft and then you got your bushing and then you got your stator base i bet you what's happening what what's supposed to happen is that the motor shaft spins inside of the metal bushing i bet you what's going on is the metal bushing is spinning inside of the stator um so yeah, uh, you can pull it apart and try to fix that, but realistically, their tiny whoop motors just get a replacement set of motors or an individual replacement motor and put it... It's probably just one motor that's doing it, so if you have a replacement motor, just put it from motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four, and the squeak will go away and you'll find the bad motor. Um, you could even do that with, like, if you have another set of motors. Just take any motor... Uh, and swap it out and then fly the thing. The, the PID loop, if, if you have a different KV or a different sized motor, the, the PID loop will adjust. Um, so for testing, it's completely fine. So yeah, you can do that. Just replace each motor one at a time and you'll find the one that's squeaky. Uh, Mamacita says, uh, do affiliate links work with the Amazon app? Oh, I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. I, I guess you would have to just navigate to my website on your phone and then hit the link, hit the affiliate link, and then it should give you the option to like open it in Safari or the application. And as long as you open it in the application, yeah, it should work. It should work. I have no idea if it actually will, but that's all you can really do, I guess. Uh, Sai says, my PIDs are stock. Also, I love the 30,000 KV motors. Uh, when I upgrade, uh, should I go to 32,000 KVs or 32.5? Uh, you nor anybody will be able to tell the difference between 32,000 and 32,500. So get the ones that are the color that you like the best. And I'm not even kidding. If you like red motors, get the 32,500s from Weebleed. If you like light blue motors, get the moon travelers from tinywoop.com. Uh, Manny, thanks for subscribing, man. Uh, Sai says my PIDs are stock, so he must be referring to a previous comment that he left. Um, any reason why Mobula 6 30,000 KV motors won't do a race launch? Okay, yeah, so it's fine that your PIDs are stock. You've got very powerful motors on a very lightweight rig. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you want launch mode to perform better, you're going to have to pull your PIDs down. Well, it's this way for you. You're going to have to pull your PIDs down to 0.9 or 0.8. I wouldn't, you know... It, Try it, and and if the if it still flies okay, then yeah, you're good. But I, I would personally not, I would not prioritize the race launch unless you're a racer, and that's that's really important, right? That that's why you you got to kind of make that decision for yourself. But that's what's going on. Uh, Free Lojo with a five dollar super chat. He says, "Here's because Pyro doesn't have a link." Got the X Nova eighteen oh fours. Thank you so much, Free Lojo. Yeah, Pyro does not have an affiliate program. Uh, they kicked, they had one and then they kicked everybody off of it. Um, and they're not doing it anymore. So yeah, that's super cool of you. Uh, Freelogist also says, James Simmons has a good question above. He says, what available AIO, James Simmons says, what available AIO and motors do you recommend for the Grinderino build? Um, uh, so yeah, we just talked about that at length. Uh, everything that we were just talking about a minute ago was basically in reference to a Grinderino build or any other three and a half inch build. Um, so yeah, there you go. And the, the short answer is just to head over to, uh, the page that I curated over on fpvknowitall.com, which is the, the micro and the tiny whoop pages. Uh, so yeah, the sub 250 page here, uh, this is all of my, hi Felicia Day, uh, this is all of my suggestions and they are still totally valid. I, I reworked this page a few months ago. Uh, I spent tons and tons and tons of time on it. Uh, and yeah, so here you go, 1604, 1804, and 1804. This is, these are really going to be your best. The X Nova is my favorite. Um, the T Motor Pacer 1804 is my second favorite. The 1604 uh, is my third favorite. You'll love any one of these. Um, I th pay attention to the uh, to the mounting pattern. Um, yeah, I think this one is nine by nine. I think the X Nova is. 9x9 nine nine as well, and then this T-Motor 1804, I believe, is 12x12. 12 12. But just check it. It's it's in the item specs uh, on the uh, on the motors before you check out. 
Uh, Rob Axelson says, hey, sorry, Collective, I was brewing beer and burning packs. Very cool. Little props and hops. Best multitasking I've ever done. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hockey rounds with a $10 super chat. He says, new fund fund. Uh, what are we doing, man? What, what, I asked this on the last stream, uh, and then I didn't read any of the answers. Maybe, maybe I read the answers. I probably didn't, though. Uh, what are we doing? What's the next fund? Let's, so, just, well, I can just do this. I can go like that. So this is the uh, the medicine man cometh fund. This is the health insurance fund. Um, the more money goes into this, the closer that I'll get to to getting health insurance. Yes, I'm a 42 year old man without health insurance. Uh, no, you should not follow in my footsteps. It is very silly to do that. Um, but yeah, if you want to donate to uh, to me, getting closer and closer um, to being able to afford health care, there's how you do it. Uh, and then if, if there's something else kind of coming out that uh, that we want to test, we can swap the fund back over. But uh, this is how far we've gotten into the Medicine Man Cometh Fund, I think, this year. I, I think uh, this got reset at the beginning of the year. So, yeah, much appreciated, friends. Uh... Rob Axelson is running those Ecnova 3500 KV motors on a 4S 4-inch rig. Um, they work on 4-inch. Um, they just lack a little bit of, uh, a, they're, they're more of like a long, long range four inch motor. I really prefer 2004s on four inch propellers, uh, over the 1804s. Um, I went down that road with a QAV four inch build a while ago and, and I just, yeah, I preferred the little bit of extra stator volume, but on a three and a half inch prop, good Lord, the four, the, the 1804s are just beautifully matched. Elmo Hawk says, oi, oi. Uh, RT McKinney says, uh, or get them all and build a bunch of similar whoops like I am. Yeah, that's true. That That's one of the better ways to, to test stuff head to head. Although if, um, if you, if, if the AIOs are slightly different or one gyro is, is like not as good out of the box, it, it can kind of confuse things. So it's really, really, really hard to head to head test stuff in, in FPV. There's so many variables. 661 says new puppy fund. Um, we are probably uh, Azalea, our 12 year old, um, does want another dog, but Maggie and I kind of don't. Um, so we're gonna be uh, petless for as long as we kind of can right now um, until the kids scream and yell enough that we just give up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're probably not going down that road uh, if if. We have anything to say about it. RT McKinney says, I ordered five AIOs of the same type. Very cool. I mean, that'll help. But yeah, unfortunately, with quality control as bad as it is, it, it, that's still not a surefire way. And I only say that because I've been down that road. Like, I tried to do the exact same thing. I tried to build three completely identical um, tiny whoops. I do this a lot. Like, I'll try to build three completely identical setups. There are three rib squeaks here. Uh, there are three... Uh, glides up here um, for a little while. I had three Cinesplores, uh, Cinewoops, two were Cinesplores, one was a Tooth Fairy 2. Um, I, I find that to be the best way to do head to head to head comparisons. Every single time I've ever done it, I have never been able to get the PIDs completely identical on all three rigs, even though in most cases they've got the exact same electronics. So it's. Um, it's super frustrating if, if I'm honest. The closest thing that you can do is that you tune all three of them um, and then whichever one has the weakest gains, you pull the rest of them down to those weak, weaker gains. And, and then, yeah. But it's still imperfect because that the one that's tuned all the way um, is going to be a little bit more jittery because it's tuned all the way. Um, than the other two that have been backed down a little bit. So it's it's just kind of imperfect. It's it's tough, but we do what we can. Uh, Brandon Zwaypeen says, I started helping Captain Cannoli's Grinderino today, and you'll be happy to hear it's very nice, very clean, much tunable. Love that. Um, I had a feeling because the arms are very, very, very thick. They're, they're four millimeter arms, which is nuts for a three inch, three and a half inch rig. Um, but yeah, that will almost certainly, unless the geometry is wrong, which I'm, I, I was assuming it's not because Tommy has made a number of different frames and he does black box logging. Um, it's great to hear it from Brandon cause he's an ultra ninja mega tuner. Northern tier says, do you plan to do a grinderino build or any future live streams? I think a bunch of us, uh, bought the frame. Yep. Uh, two days ago on Friday stream, uh, I went over my, I opened up it, I opened it up 
uh, talked all about it, talked about my plans for the build. Um, so yeah, if you want to dive into what uh, the plan is for this, just go one stream back. And uh, I think there's timestamps up for it already from uh, uh, Apache Smoke. So you'll be able to go right to that part of the uh, of the live stream. Uh, Polly Shorts, Shortcuts says, is there a reason analog comes in right polarization, dis polarization digital comes in left? Uh, uh, what are the, s the small, tiny whip antennas set to? Great question, Polly. Um, I have no idea why we chose right-hand circular polarization way back when, uh, but we did. When digital was first coming out, uh, I'm assuming that DJI maybe realized, like, hey, all of the analog stuff is on right hand, and we don't want to stomp them, so let's go to left hand. We're going to stomp them anyway, but we can help that a little bit by going to left hand circular polarization. Um, or maybe DJI just closed their eyes and pointed and happened to point at left hand circular. Uh, the whip antennas have no polarization, so they are sort of both right and left hand circularly polarized. Um, and so they will bleed all over everything. So like a digital setup with a whip antenna is bleederific and, and it's as bad as it's going to get. Um, so yeah, that's how that works. Great question. Stavel says, PayPal donation to your health insurance. We need you healthy to keep you making these videos. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, let me scroll up a little bit here. Holy hell, $40. Chris, thank you so much. Uh, he says, Stavel, Medicine Man Fund, since we need to stick you around. You need to stick around and keep making these videos. Dude, very, very cool. So 460 goes up to 5 even. Super generous, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I still feel like I'm a little... Uh, my face is a little dark. Let me... Because I rotated these... It's a it, it's a sliding scale. You you rotate your, your soft boxes with grids um, so that it's spilling less on the background, but then it spills less on your face and then you have to turn them up, and then they spill more on the background because you turn them up. So it's, it can be a little bit annoying. I think I might, they're, they're shooting up kind of high. I, I, I've been meaning to kind of adjust them. I, it, I, I, it'll help if I point them down a little bit, uh, which I'm gonna do real quick here. Uh, it'll also get them a little bit closer to my face. It looks kind of silly, but who gives a rat's fat ass about that? You know what I'm saying? All right, so that's pointing them down just a little bit more. Oh boy. Uh, so yeah, that should help a little bit. With lighting um, in like my own studio setups, I, I tend to make little subtle adjustments here and there, like making a big adjustment it can, can be a little annoying. That's, wow, okay. That made a huge difference, actually. So now I can cook these down a little bit. And, okay. Now I look a little bit more tan. I look a little bit more Italian. And then the easiest thing to check it is always to just kick them off and look at what happens to the background. So let me just shield myself. Yeah, see, it's still spilling on the background a lot. But much less than ever before, to be to be really honest. That one spills a good amount. You can really see it up here in the white. Watch it, ready? See it? It really goes white. But, you know, it is what it is. Fear Ledger with a $5 super chat, he says, for the fund and put the arms of the Grinderino together and see how strong it is, please. Uh, we are gonna do that on maybe tomorrow night's live stream. We will we will put the Grinderino together, bolt it together. Um, I gotta get, uh, we gotta get into the simulator, talk about dives, and then I gotta wrap this thing up at like in like 20 minutes or so, cause I gotta get uh, the rest of my shit packed and get out the door uh, on the way to this gig. Uh, 505, thank you, dude. Very, very cool. Much appreciate the support. McConnell Studios is in the house. He says, PayPal cometh. Damn, McConnell Studios with a $50 PayPal donation. Thank you, homie. He says, the man cometh. <laughs> uh, McConnell Studios, if, if you guys don't follow him on Instagram, you're just, you're missing out. It, it's, he makes the coolest metal sculptures that I've, I think I've ever seen. Like he's had a bunch of them in, in Burning Man and like, it's just so cool. So do yourself a favor and follow McConnell Studios over on Instagram. I absolutely love seeing the stuff that he's working on. It's just the coolest shit ever. And he's a crazy mega supporter 
um, of the insanity that has been uh, being a full-time FPV donkey. I was about to say the I was about to say the next two words that they say on South Park all the time, but I do sometimes try to not curse a lot, um, not curse as much. Let's say that. <laughs> See, uh, thank you again, uh, Matt. Very very cool of you. CH three says I have a set. Uh, I have sent you an Instagram reel with a skateboard line filmed with the QAV Whoop two and a half inch, and the Session Five uh, wanted to hear from you live. Thanks, bro. Um, CH3, I, I will reply to you over there on Instagram. Um, I, I gotta get into the sim here, though. Sorry, brother. Uh, but, yeah, I'll reply back to you over there. Uh, Captain Vlad says, uh, although I think I may have already replied back. I, I think I already did reply. Uh, Captain Vlad says, Xnova 1804 with T-mounts or T-motor Pacer 1804 with M5. This is what I can source locally. Um, it's all about which propeller you want to, to use, Vlad. Um... I have a love affair with the X Nova 1804 with the M5 motor shaft mount because I love those motors on the T motor 3140 propellers, which are M5 mount only. So for me, I really prefer uh, that M5 mount. There are a bunch of propellers that are T mount only, and, and in that case, you would go with the T mount. So let it be about the propellers. Look at the different propellers that exist, figure out which ones you want to run. And there you go. One of the, my favorite things about Gemfan is that their hubs are set up to use either. So you don't have to play this annoying-ass game. Um, but, yeah, if there's a propeller that you want to run um, that is only M5 mount, that makes the question easy for you. Or only T mount, same deal. So let's get into Velocidrone here and talk a little bit about dialing in your dives. Uh, there is a, a, a little-known... First and foremost... If you, if you rotate on the way down the building on your dive, I'm going to beat you. I am so tired of perfectly good dives being ruined because you're rotating the entire way down. Like, dives are so impressive, and the side of these buildings that we're going down, or whatever the vertical face is, is so cool looking that you, that you stop and stop. App dive and the biv and the biv story. So, so foremost, do not do not do way down the building. The building. The build. You did not set not set not properly and and out from the building. Do it again. If you can't do it again and and it's your only shot. Okay, fine. Rotate around. Give it throttle when you're facing the building to pull yourself back into the building and then rotate around again. I get it. But 99% of the time, you can just stop that dive, climb back up to the top, and do it again. And throw yourself closer to the building so that you don't get pulled out off the building. I'm going to show you how to not get pulled out off the building, though. And that's sort of the thing that most people don't realize that they can, A, do. Most people literally don't realize that they can do it. They don't realize that there is something that you can do to prevent you from being pulled off of the side of the building. And you can actually do this to tuck yourself in to the side of the building. And it's pitch related. It's basically, you just want to pitch forward more. Where, where are the trip? There it is, city. All right, so we're good, perfect. Uh, so yeah, the, the city map in Velocidrone is the best spot to do it. This is an open multiplayer room. It's called Ciati FPV. You can feel free to join it. Uh, you don't have to, but you can if you'd like. Let me turn on my transmitter. That's going to help an awful lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Transmitter is on sim mode with the uh, with everything turned off. So, as a reminder, if you set your dive up and then you do this the whole way down, I'm going to beat you with a hammer. What a lot of people do that because they set up for their dive and they don't throw themselves in enough, and they get nervous, and they pick up the throttle, and now I'm too far away, and now they pick up the throttle here to suck themselves in, and it's too late. Um, hold on, let me give you guys a stick overlay. There you go. Um, so, yeah, don't do that. If if you set your dive up, and you chickened out, and you didn't get close enough to the building, don't do this. Don't do that. It just... It, the dive just doesn't doesn't look good. If that happens, if you get up here... 
and you chicken out and you turn yourself over now and you're like, ah, oh, I'm too far away. Shit. Just bail. Just do that. Come back and set it up again. And the name of the game, and what I want you to realize too, is that it's very safe. Like, I know it seems sketchy because you're getting close to the building and you're like, ah, that's close enough. Like, this is the safest thing ever. Because if you get too close, as soon as you turn over, you can just bash the throttle and that's going to pull you out. Like, the entire scenario is set up for you to be able to get away from that building, right? Like, even now you can hammer the throttle and come up over it. Like, you, you're, you're not going to be charging towards the building to the point where like it's hard to get it to not slam into it. You're going to be almost always like slowly going towards the building cuz it's sketchy and then it's so easy to pull yourself off of it cuz as soon as you turn over as soon as you turn over to look down, your thrust vector is immediately pulling you away. So all you have to do is blast the throttle and it'll pull you away. So you can really get gnarly and wait till like the last second and really stick nice and close to the building, right? That's what everybody wants. Everybody wants the dive where they come up and they get infinitely close and ride that some bitch an inch off of it all the way into the ground, right? And to to do that by going like this is silly like and it's sketchy because when you're when you're um when you wrote this is safe you can blast the throttle and get out this is not if you blast the throttle too much look we're inside the building that's where things can get sketchy it's actually more sketchy to rotate on the way down than to just dive it like a, a good person <laughs> bottom in the whole time now you just noticed hopefully that I got closer. As I was diving down, I was getting closer to the building. And for a lot of people, that's confusing. A lot of people, um, they have trouble with this right now. We're getting farther away. Getting farther and farther and farther away from the building. Um, and that has to do with pitch. I want you to watch this. I'm going to go slowly approach the building. I'm going to turn over. And I'm not going to pitch forward very much. I'm not going to have much of the building in the frame. I'm going to be up here like this. And now I'm getting pulled away. See, I'm getting pulled away, pulled away, pulled away, pulled away. Versus. And it's kind of silly to do that anyway, right? Because you're doing a dive, but you're not showing the building. You're showing the rest of the city. And that's kind of silly, right? You want to show the building, which is kind of nice. So when you do your dives, show the building. Come up here and show the building. And now you'll notice I'm getting sucked in to the point where I have to come up on the throttle to not hit the building. And so it's a perfect scenario where if you show the subject that you're diving, you'll get sucked in. If you don't, you'll get pushed out. And the reason why is air. It's, it's just an aerodynamic thing. And I'm gonna show you on the camera here. If you dive down the building like this with the quad completely straight, and this is the scenario where there was very little building in view, right? Because think of the up tilt. The up tilt is here. So if you're coming down a flat face and the up tilt is framing out here, you're going to have just a little sliver of the building in frame and look at it falling. The, the propellers, you're going to be at zero throttle. So air mode is on. That's making a little bit of thrust. And the, and the, the static air is coming by and it's not really doing much of it. It's just whizzing right past the rig. So you've got thrust that's pulling you out and there's no aerodynamic advantage to pull you back in. If you look towards the building, again, here's the building. If instead of diving like this, you look in towards the building, the static air is gonna come up and get redirected off of all of the surfaces of the quad and that is going to aerodynamically suck you into the building. So when you do a building dive, the more you look in at the building, the more you're gonna get sucked into it. Nobody seems to know this. <laughs> um, so for the love of God, scream this from the rooftops because I'm tired of seeing dives with people rotating on the way down, ruining what would have otherwise been an amazing dive. Um, some rigs will, the problem is wind up. When you're zero throttle, um, 
when there's aerodynamic issues, the motors and the error correction, the PID loop, they can create more thrust than braking. So the 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 more vibrations there are, the dirtier the air, the more swirling the air is, uh, the more the motors are going to need to wind up to keep the rig from shaking all over the damn place. Um, if your PIDs are cranked up, this is going to be even worse. Um, if your PIDs are loose, you're going to have a little bit more motion in the camera, but it's not going to wind up as much to correct that. Um, but dropping your PIDs down to make the rig dive better is not the answer. The answer is to look into the building so that all of this static air will naturally want to pull this thing into the building. And the perfect setup, in my opinion, is to look into the building so much that you have to come off of zero throttle. When I do dives, I actually just want you to look at, can you see it when I'm zero throttle? Yeah, you can. Well, let me let me turn off the, uh, the text on the bottom here. Uh, where the hell do I have that text set up as? Where is it? Spotify? That's not. Zoom mic? Nope. Gear fund? Nope. Where the hell is it? There it is. Uh, I want you to watch my throttle on the way down this building. Let me click over here. Um, this is the perfect dive to me. See it? Literally flying it all the way down. Flying, flying the rig all the way down the tower. You could, you could make an argument that moving your pitch so that you get pulled in but not pulled in too much is better. But the problem with that is you're going to have to make corrections to the pitch. If I try to do this at zero throttle, right, I'm going to have to look up and then look down and then look up a little bit and look and see like it's and it's also much less reactive and so you're you're changing your pitch which is not a great thing because the shot is not as steady whereas if you just come in and you look oh, and you look in too far you can carry throttle and then you're not making those pitch changes that was a bad example so we look in and we can use the throttle. And when, when you make changes to the throttle, the shot barely changes. Let's get a good one here. So we can just leave pitch alone. And that, now I'm on the side of the building. But you can see how, how much I'm getting sucked in, right? Like, we went all the way onto the side of the building because of how much I was looking down and using that aerodynamic benefit to our advantage here. And then you just use a little bit of throttle also, using the throttle is a much quicker way of controlling your proximity to the building than doing it with pitch. Doing it with pitch, it's a much slower kind of situation. And so when you start doing this, um, you're just going to kind of figure out how far, like where you want to put the building in your field of view. And it's usually kind of like towards the middle. I, I usually tend to put the bottom face of the building roughly in the center that's going to really depend on your up tilt though this is something else that's going to kind of change this so for everybody it's going to be a little bit different and you just want to adjust it so that you are oops crashing into the ground um so that you are just doing a little bit of maintenance throttle on the way down the uh on the way down the building if you want to be a total lunatic you can do upside down dives like that where your nose in but then you have no way of uh of correcting ah, i thought i would clear that so that my friends is how to dial in your dives those are all the different things that go into making a dive really really good and yeah the the one of the big things that nobody talks about is that this this is so exciting. Like, just let the, what you're doing be the exciting part. You do not need to add extra excitement to a dive with rotations. Like, if you're just flying in a goddamn desert out here, 
like, sure, adding rotations is going to add a little bit of flavor to it, and it's, it's kind of fun because just, you know, flying around on, on flat ground is not the most exciting thing. Diving down the side of an object is plenty exciting. So don't do too much work. Let the, the, the camera movement, let the subject do all of the work. And just dive it straight down. It's and and here's the here's the other thing, is that to any pilot that's been around for a while, a straight dive is like this is much more impressive than a dive where you're rotating all the way down. Because we know what you're doing. We know why you're rotating. You're rotating because you're not pulling yourself in on the object enough. And like we don't want to see that. The general public doesn't want to see it because whenever we break the horizon line, the general public's head explodes because every single TV show and movie they've ever watched, any aerial footage has been on a gimbal and gimbals keep the horizon line flat. So as soon as we do this, most people go, oh, what the fuck is happening? Turn this shit off. I don't want to watch you fly, you gigantic idiot. So hook those people up, do a dive straight down like this. The good pilots will be like, damn. The regular people will be like, damn! And you'll feel better about yourself. Let's do a little bit of flying. Uh, it's 428. Let's shut the stream down and uh, prep for this gig instead. Get over there! Get over there! Nope. Didn't make it. Do like one more minute of flying. Ah, I tried to really lay that out. All right, that's good. Uh, any questions? No, 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 no. Where is Velocidrone? Quit, 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 quit. There we go. Uh, ch 3 fb says, thanks, man. I appreciate it. You got it, brother. Uh... Yeah, any last second questions, get them in real quick. Otherwise, we are going to shut this show down, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. Uh, and then I'll be back. I'll see you guys on Tuesday night for the Joshua Bardwell news. I didn't I didn't know it was a secret. Uh, I didn't know he was keeping it a secret, so I, I, I talked about it uh, two days ago. But, yeah, I'm the, uh, I'm the special guest host. I'm going to be doing... Uh, stepping in for Joshua uh, on the Tuesday Night News for the next uh, about month or so. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you guys Tuesday night. Um, it, it's it's kind of like Blunty's show. Like, I'm just being brought in, like, as talent, basically. So I'm not going to be, to my knowledge, I'm not going to be pushing the buttons and uh, whatnot, uh, which is kind of great because I don't know how to set it up with two people. Uh, so it'll be cool. Uh, Cy, with the last question on the live stream, he says, how notices the difference between 30,000 and 32,500? Um, it's there. It's not night and day, but it is there. There is definitely a difference between 30 and 32. Um, so, yeah, I really do prefer the 32s over the 30s. Um, all right, friends, thank you for hanging out. Be cool. Go over to CIDFPV.com and click all the buttons, and uh, I'll pee my pants. AJ says, can't wait to see you. Uh, Brains McBean says, we more or less just wrapped up tuning Cannoli's Grinderino. It's super easy and basically running on well on stock PIDs and the filter setup we did. Very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, here comes some more walk snail tiny whooping, chasing little mini drift cars around. I hope you enjoy. I'll see you tomorrow night. And uh, we'll talk some more shit because that's what we do. To everybody that's new, thanks for hanging. Stick around for a while. And uh, you'll dig it, I promise. Oh, yeah, this is a good one. All right, people, see you tomorrow night at 10. Later! Or maybe 8. Maybe I'll go on tonight, at, tomorrow night at 8, uh, which is Joshua's time slot. Be good! Love you! Bye-bye!